I'm Norbert Morgenstern, past president of the International Society for Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering. The videos that you're about to watch were first filmed in 1991 with the intent to capture in action leading lights in geotechnical practice and research. Dr. Ralph Peck was an obvious candidate for this enterprise given his international status as educator, researcher, and consulting geotechnical engineer. Dr. Peck passed away this year on February 18, 2008, at the age of 95. He leaves a legacy of countless students, colleagues, and clients who are inspired by his wisdom and humanity. As Dr. Suzanne Lacasse, managing director of the Norwegian Geotechnical Institute, wrote in a moving obituary, we say thank you for the life you lived, for sharing with us your intellect and your passion for soils, geotechnical engineering, and civil engineering. We're all enriched not only by the contents of your contribution, but also by the style with which you practiced your profession. We're fortunate that only two years ago, the breadth of Ralph Peck's humanity and his technical contributions were captured in a biographical volume edited by Nancy Peck Young, his daughter, and John Dunnicliffe, a well-known consulting engineer and past student of Dr. Peck. It is titled, The Essence of the Man. After viewing this video and seeking additional guidance on the art and science of geotechnical engineering, you may wish to consult this volume to better understand the essence of Ralph Peck and his profound contribution. Thank you. I'm Norbert Morgenstern, President of the International Society for Soil Mechanics and Foundation Engineering. This video marks a new venture on the part of our society. Together with Biotech Publishers, we are launching a series of videos entitled Leaders of Geotechnical Engineering. Geotechnical Engineering combines soil mechanics, rock mechanics, and engineering geology in a wide range of endeavors that spans from purely theoretical and abstract activities to the more practical and empirical. While our rich literature is capable of reflecting the technical content of our activities, it is generally unable to embrace the human element. Indeed, modern technical writing goes to some effort often to eliminate it. The translation of geotechnical concepts into the important engineering works of our time is not undertaken by conforming to preset rules, but instead relies on the imagination and leadership of our teachers, researchers, and practitioners. It is the intent of these videos to not only present material of lasting technical interest, but also delve beyond the purely technical and capture the personality, the humanity, of leaders in geotechnical engineering who have given so much to our subject. To do this, we are inviting well-known geotechnical engineers to donate their time and assist us in filming this series. In this way, we hope to create a visual archive that is of lasting interest and that captures the science, the art, and the personality of geotechnical engineering. We are particularly pleased that Dr. Ralph Peck has agreed to assist us in filming this first video in the series. The contributions of Dr. Peck and the awards that he has received are too numerous to be detailed here. Ralph Peck, as a teacher, as a researcher, and as a practitioner, has touched the lives of virtually everyone in the field of geotechnical engineering. Detailed biographies and appreciations may be found in the volumes 
judgment in geotechnical engineering, the professional legacy of Ralph B. Peck, and the art and science of geotechnical engineering, a volume honoring Dr. Peck. Most of us in our written works are content to deal with technical issues alone. Not so Dr. Peck. In his writings, he has gone to some considerable effort to discuss the role of judgment in geotechnical engineering. This is a recurrent theme in his publications, particularly over the past 20 years, and it emphasizes Dr. Peck's overriding commitment to advancing our profession. Judgment. What is it? How do you get it? How do you apply it? We're very fortunate that Dr. Peck returns to this theme of engineering judgment in the first video in the series, Leaders of Geotechnical Engineering. Let us now listen to Dr. Ralph Peck. Thank you, Norty. Everybody agrees that an engineer should have good judgment. Everybody agrees, I think, that great engineers have been men of exceptional judgment. But probably people would have a hard time defining what they mean by the term engineering judgment. I'm not sure I can define it myself, but I can give some inklings as to what might be involved. For one thing, an engineer of judgment needs a sense of proportion, a sense of the fitness of things. And not all engineers, unfortunately, have this. Quite a few years ago, I was on the examining board for structural engineering in the state of Illinois. The people who took these examinations were required to have graduated from an accredited school and to have had six years of practice under the guidance of a registered structural engineer. So these were men who had already had some experience. Part of the examination was called general engineering knowledge. And I used to ask some questions that people thought of as being quite unfair, perhaps, and a bit offbeat. I asked, for example, what is the span of the longest suspension bridge? Now, at the time, the Golden Gate Bridge was the longest bridge. It was 4,200 feet. I would have been perfectly happy with any answer between 3,000 feet and, say, a mile, because that was the right order of magnitude. But there went, were men taking this examination who said 300 feet or 8,000 feet or 10,000 feet. These men had experience in designing. But if they had made a calculation, could you really expect them to test it out for size to see if they had really got the right order of magnitude of things? The men had many other shortcomings that might be a little more historical than uh, numerical. I asked, for instance, sometimes about famous engineers or famous structures. To identify the Quebec Bridge, for example, the answers I got were ranged from the world's longest suspension bridge to a bridge that fell down twice during construction, which is the correct answer. Uh, a correct answer because it's also one of the longest cantilever spans. But a whole variety of answers that suggested that these men might have had no conception as to the magnitude of a big bridge. And sometimes I asked a really absurd question like, how big is a column load? On the face of it, that doesn't make sense. If I had nar narrowed it down and said, how big is a column load for a three-story structure, that was a little easier to answer. And sometimes I would get answers like 20 million pounds. Now, if a structural engineer who had been working for six years thought that a column load from a three-story building was one that would be more suitable, say, for the Empire State Building or a Sears Tower, 
that man certainly lacked a sense of proportion. How would he be able to judge the correctness of a simple calculation if he had no feel for the size of things?